Hi students, I will try in this educational video to technologically introduce the principal rules that permit to size the nominal thickness of a tank's cylindrical shell based on the French calculation code CODAP, of course, as simply and as clearly as possible. Okay, let's go. First of all, it should be remembered that the cylindrical storage tank contains a cylindrical shell, as it is highlighted here in red, and this cylindrical shell is uh, an element among others uh, uh, constituting the storage tank. And uh, CODAP is a French calculation code which handles the construction of pressure vessels uh, not subjected to the fire. Well, the shell thickness of a cylindrical shell in a storage tank uh, is given by the formula that you see in this uh, slide of course based on uh, the calculation code CODAP so you can notice that the nominal thickness of the cylindrical shell must be equal to a certain useful thickness plus a certain corrosion allowance plus an engineering tolerance plus uh, a certain reduction during manufacturing. So this is the general uh, formula that permit to uh, determine the nominal thickness of a cylindrical shell. Well, now we will handle the useful thickness of the shell. Uh, the useful thickness can be simply seen as the required minimum thickness that will permit to the shell to resist against the loading applied by uh, the fluid pressure applied on, uh, on the inner side of the shell without taking into, cons into consideration uh, external factors such as the corrosion allowance, the engineering tolerance and the, 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 the reduction during manufacturing. And this useful thickness is calculated as the pressure multiplied by the mean diameter of the cylindrical shell divided by two times the nominal stress of the of the material uh, of the shell uh, multiplied by a certain uh, welding coefficient uh, z and this uh, formula is used when we are far from the shell ends uh, and you can um, you can obtain the useful th thickness of the shell using other formula based on the, uh, the internal diameter of the shell or the external diameter as you can see uh, in uh, the formula in this slide. But when we are at the shell ends, for example a junction between uh, a portion of shell and another portion or uh, the junction between the shell and uh, and, uh, and the form of the head, uh, this useful thickness should be lower than uh, a threshold uh, T uh, subtract uh, U0 equal to the pressure multiplied by the internal diameter divided by two times the nominal stress F of the material of the shell uh, minus the pressure P. The figure that you see now presents how uh, this uh, threshold T subscript U0 should be taken into consideration when we have a junction, here a well junction, between uh, a thicker uh, shell portion with a nominal stress F and a thinner uh, shell portion with a nominal stress F1 higher, the higher than F. And here uh, you can uh, notice certain condition about uh, the slope uh, in fact here the thicker portion uh, the decrease of the thickness of the thicker portion uh, should be gradually with a slope uh, lower than one third and there are another or there is another uh, condition about the maximum uh, distance englobing the shell portion uh, part having uh, a thickness, uh, useful thickness, lower than the threshold T subscript U0. Now for the nominal stress, 
It's to note first that we have uh, globally two operating conditions, the service operator condition and the hydraulic test operator condition. And each operator condition is uh, presented in terms of uh, the pressure and the temperature uh, of, the, of the operation. So uh, for the service operator condition, we have PS and TS as uh, pressure service and temperature service. And the nominal stress FS uh, is determined uh, based on the minimum between the yield strength divided by 1.6 and the ultimate tensile strength divided by 2.7. And here, uh, the yield strength is uh, determined uh, at uh, the temperature of, uh, of the service since the yield strength depends on the temperature. For the hydraulic test operator condition, we have uh, another pressure which is PT uh, determined, uh, determined as the maximum between 1.5 PS and 1.25 PS multiplied by the nominal stress measured at the temperature of the test divided by the nominal stress uh, measured at the, at the temperature of the surface. Uh, why uh, why, the, why uh, the nominal stress uh, is measured at, uh, at, the, at a certain temperature because uh, simply the yield strength is, uh, is, uh, de is depending on uh, the temperature and this nominal stress depends on the yield strength for the surface operating condition or also for the test operating condition and here the nominal uh, stress uh, at the test is calculated as, uh, zero, as 0 0.95 uh, multiplied by the yield uh, strength. Uh, of course, here the yield strength is measured at the temperature of the test. Normally, uh, we have to calculate the useful thickness at the surface operating uh, condition and the normal uh, and the useful thickness at the hydraulic test operating condition. And uh, finally, we we, we choose uh, the higher uh, useful thickness but practically uh, the size and condition surface or hydraulic test is determined based on the maximum between uh, PS divided by FS and, B and uh, PT divided by FT. Now for the mechanical properties of tanks materials uh, the mechanical properties can be obtained from any standards handling the mechanical properties and the tables that you see in this slide are, uh, are obtained from uh, French standard and uh, for example here for several uh, steel grades uh, such as A37, A42, A48 and uh, A52 uh, we have uh, we can obtain uh, the, the ultimate tensile strength R and also we can obtain the yield strength RT for uh, several temperature and several uh, thickness ranges. Now for the welding coefficient Z, uh, it's determined based on the table that you see in this slide. Uh, this table is, is, is extracted from CODAP and uh, you can notice that based on the construction category A or B or C or D uh, with a risk, uh, high risk for A, uh, a quite high risk for B, average risk for C and low risk for D. The weld coefficient is determined uh, as 1 or 0 0.85 or 0 0.7. Uh, you can notice in this table that uh, for uh, construction categories with high risk uh, the thickness is thin while they are thick for construction category with uh, low risk. This seems uh, not logic but uh, this is not the case. Why? Because, in fact, for construction category with high risk, uh, the safety controls applied on tanks are important in terms of rigor and uh, of uh, frequency. So the inspection are uh, more rigorous and more uh, frequent. While uh, the safety control for uh, construction category with uh, low risk are soft. Uh, for that reason, uh, it's admissible to have a thin thickness for, uh, for construction category with high risk since the safety controls are important, but uh, for the construction category with low risk, 
uh, it's important uh, to have uh, thick uh, thickness because uh, the controls or the ins or the inspections are soft in terms of rigor and frequency now for the corrosion allowance uh, it is from 0 to 3 mm uh, based on the corrosivity of the couple uh, stored fluid uh, material of the tank as well as the nature of the anti-rust and uh, pant uh, coatings but it's very important uh, to to say here that the cor this corrosion allowance is determined based on an agreement with the customer this is very important the agreement with the customer about the corrosion allowance now for the engineering tolerance it can be obtained uh, for example from this table which is extracted from a french code and you can notice that based on the thickness we can obtain the engineering tolerance for several classes class a class b class c and class d and uh, the limits the lower and the upper limits uh, will change from one class to another but the span will uh, remain the same it's to note here that the engineering tolerance c1 that should be taken into consideration when determining the nominal thickness of the shell is the absolute value of the uh, of the lower limit of the engineering tolerance for example when we have a thickness between 5 and 8 millimeters based on this table for a class uh, d uh, we have minus uh, 0 0.75 as lower limit of the engineering tolerance so c1 will be the absolute value of the of minus 0 0.75 which is equal to 0 0.75 for example when we are in class b uh, and the thickness is between uh, 5 and 8 millimeters the lower limit of the engineering tolerance is minus 0 0.3 uh, so the engineering tolerance will be the absolute value of uh, minus 0 0.3 which is equal to 0 0.3 uh, it's very important also to know that uh, the customer should uh, choose between uh, classes so determining uh, the class uh, is based on an agreement with the customer class a class b c or d Finally, for the reduction during manufacturing C2, it depends obviously in uh, the finesse and uh, the precision of the manufacturing process and uh, generally it can be neglected. So uh, it takes zero millimeters. Now, after theoretically determining the nominal thickness of the shell as the addition between useful thickness and the corrosion allowance and the engineering tolerance and the reduction during manufacturing we have to choose a standard plate thickness for the shell so uh, the standard plate thickness will be just the higher to the uh, calculated uh, theoretical nominal thickness so uh, we have uh, several type of standard uh, plates we have uh, offshore steel plate, structural steel plate, pressure vessel steels, uh, ship building plate, and wear and abrasion resistant steel plate. So obviously we will choose the pressure vessel uh, steels and uh, we will uh, choose, uh, as I said, the just uh, the value of the thickness just higher than the nominal thickness that's all for this educational video thank you very much for your attention and uh, if you have any remarks or suggestions please don't uh, hesitate to mention it in the comments thank you